So as you can see behind me, I have quite a sizeable Game Boy collection, but there's always been one thing that's eluded me, and I finally got it. This is Game Studio and the Games To Go cartridge, quite possibly the rarest unlicensed Game Boy cartridge there is. I've had it in my eBay watch list for over 10 years now, and it's never come up. Even super rare Game Boy games like Avenging Spirit or Trip World, you still see them pop up on eBay from time to time, even if they are insane prices. Whenever I looked this up online, I could only ever find three results. There was a press release from back in 2001, there was a funny two-star review on Amazon back from 2001 as well, and there was also a paragraph on a website called NES World. And the only reason that I even know about it is because of this magazine here called Action GBX, and the reason I found out about it was that I decided recently to try and collect all of these games that were on the back cover here, and I did a whole video about them at some point last year, but as well as these, there was two other cartridges that Daytel also made around the same time. One of them was this here called the Smartcom, which I actually found at Vintage Gamer a few weeks ago. So imagine my shock and surprise when I got a tweet off someone who'd watched my video about the Rocket Games, and he said that he had one for sale. So what exactly is the game? to go cartridge and what exactly is Game Studio for the PS2? Let's find out. This video of course is sponsored by Bifrost Bridge Studios who are working very hard on an upcoming Game Boy RPG. As well as that it's also going to include a board game and a card game as well and I've got loads to show you about that in the future so subscribe if you want to see more. So what it is basically Game Studio is a Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator for the PS2 and the cartridge here also comes with this memory card attachment so you put that in the PlayStation and then you can put any Game Boy game you want in the top there and play it on the PS2. As well as that, this cartridge can download games that were stored on this disc. They're actually all of the Rocket games that I showed off earlier. You can actually download them all and actually put them on this and then play the game of your choice on the original Game Boy. So I've actually got a set of different games that I want to test with this to see how they run on the emulator and then we'll try out transferring some games onto the cartridge as well. Before we take a look at all of the unique games, let's see how it plays a Game Boy Classic. This is Super Mario Land and I picked this one because I know the entire game off by heart so I know exactly how it should look and feel. Right, here it is, Super Mario Land and unfortunately, let's just press start here, I can't hear any sound, or maybe there is, but it's really quiet because I can see on the game capture there is a little bit of sound. So let's uh, try turning up the volume here. Oh, oh dear. Okay, if you want to call that sound, there's sound, the buttons are reversed, so you have to press circle to jump, which is really weird, and hold X to run which again is very strange, like holding your thumb like that rather than like that, which is a lot more comfortable. So, But in terms of the actual gameplay, it seems smooth enough. It doesn't seem like there's any lag, like I'm able to play the game perfectly fine. We've got the option to take a snapshot. You can save or load. I presume that is like save states rather than a screenshot. How do I do that? Press start. Okay. So yeah, let me try and jump down this pit here and then see whether it'll let me... Uh, go back on snapshot, load, yeah it did. So that's basically save states which is pretty cool for the time. We've also got slow motion which I guess does what it suggests. Yep, so now you can play the whole game in slow motion. So I was playing around with this earlier and the next option here called trainer, I actually have no idea what this is supposed to be doing. To be honest I think it's something to do with action replay because this actually has a built-in action replay cheat device in there as well. So if I go on trainer, you can see you've got known value, unknown value, um, and here I really don't know what it's trying to do, but you can search for a value, let's just say 34, and then return to game, and then whatever 34 meant, I presume something might happen. I don't even know what that's doing, so you've got the option just to return to game. I'm actually pressing up or down now and nothing's happening, but maybe you have to play it for a little bit first. Um, and then... Okay, now you can... I don't know. If anyone has any idea what that actually means, let me know in the comments down below. 
Um, I tried to work it out before I filmed this as well, but I just couldn't. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you all is the different colour schemes. So we've got four different options here. We have original flavour, which is that sort of orange one. We have hot and spicy, which is a bright orange one, which is kind of horrible to look at, if I'm completely honest. We also have uh, Tutti Frutti, which was a pink and purple colour scheme, which doesn't look too bad actually. The sprites stand out quite nicely on this one. And oh, I almost pressed the wrong button then. I'm not used to these controls being reversed. And the final one we've got here is one called Minty Fresh, which is kind of the most original Game Boy looking one out of the bunch. So I thought it'd be interesting to see whether it has any Super Game Boy support, whether it uses the custom color schemes, or whether it includes the Super Game Boy borders. Let's have a look. I'm presuming this will just boot up as an original Game Boy game, but let's find out. Yeah, like I thought, it just boots it up as um, as a original Game Boy game. So there's no Super Game Boy support on this. But the good thing is, it does play Game Boy Color games, which the Super Game Boy doesn't do. I love Donkey Kong 94, by the way. If you guys haven't played this game, it's by far my favorite Donkey classic Donkey Kong game, anyway. It's by far my favorite classic Donkey Kong game. Seems to run fine. Uh, oh, that's new. Update cart. Ah, I presume because I made a save file, you can actually save it back to the game or maybe not all the time so i tried that with the pokemon games and then you can see that i'm typing my name in there and i saved as soon as i got outside and then chose to copy it back onto the cartridge and then took it out and put it into the game boy and loaded the save up perfectly fine so surprisingly that's one thing that this says it would do that it actually does do so that's pretty cool although i don't really see myself ever using this option apart from just to test it out right now but maybe someone did back in the day Now this is something I was curious to see whether it would work or not. This is a game that was compatible with both the original Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. So I was really curious to see whether it shows up as the color version or whether it shows up as the black and white version. So let's find out with Tetris DX. And it seems like they show up in their color version, so that's pretty cool to see. But yeah, unfortunately they still sound absolutely terrible. Another thing I wanted to test was to see how it would react to actually playing one of the Daytime games on the device which already had the Daytime games pre-installed. So I checked it out with Painter that I've got here. Okay, it's loading. Yes, it did actually work. Although there's absolutely no reason that you would ever put the cartridge in here to play this game because you could just play it straight on the system itself. I just thought of something else that I want to try as well actually, whether the sound is any better running from the games that are built into the system rather than running from the uh, game cartridge. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna die now, but I'm just gonna turn the volume up on the TV. Oh, that is horrible. That is so, so bad, that's disgusting, honestly. Right, let's take that out. So if we go on Painter, click on Play Now and load it up. Let's see whether the sound is any different. It, it actually is different. I didn't expect that. It's still got a really weird hiss to it, but... Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's slightly better. Now, I was almost certain that this wouldn't work. This is Kirby's Tilt and Tumble. And in this game, you actually have to tilt the Game Boy in order to roll Kirby around the different levels. I thought it'd be really funny to see whether I could actually lift the PS2 up and tilt it around to control the stages. Unfortunately, of course, as I predicted, it didn't work. Another thing that unfortunately didn't work at all was using the EverDrive on here. And finally, for the Game Boy games that I wanted to test on the system, in one of the press releases, it mentioned the fact that it has rumble support. When you play it with a game like Perfect Dark or Pokemon Pinball that I've got here, I tested it on the Game Boy beforehand and the rumble does work, so let's see whether it worked on the PlayStation 2 itself. Let's see first whether it can actually recognise the game. And then let's see whether it can actually recognise the rumble output as well. I tested it in the Game Boy and it is working, it's got a fresh battery in there, although you probably don't need the battery because it should be uh, transferring the rumble directly to the controller, so yeah, unfortunately nothing's happening. So I don't know whether that was just in the press release to try and make it sound better than it actually is, or... Okay, rumble is set to strong, so I definitely should feel something. 
and no, nothing's happening to the actual cartridge either, so unless there's something I need to change in the settings, but I don't think there is. Oh, wow, oh wait, okay. That's new. So, so yeah, I wasn't, uh, you can't go back. Okay, so pressing, okay, this is, this is a new revelation that I've just discovered. So pressing L2 or R2, you can weirdly tilt the game screen forward, which is very strange. Why they didn't just make a full screen option, I have no clue, but for a pinball game, actually, it looks pretty good tilted forward like that. It's just a shame that it cuts off the top and the bottom of the screen. And now let's take a look at the main feature of this system, transferring games onto this games to go cartridge using the memory card adapter. So I'm putting the games to go cartridge in the slot here. And then if you go on Rocket Games, and if you pick one, say pick Karate Joe, and then if you choose Game To Go, um, it seemed to take a few attempts when I tried it earlier. As you can see now, it's not the most reliable thing, but if you keep trying it, if you keep taking the cartridge out, keep putting it back in, eventually you'll get it to go through. So let's try now. Yeah, it looks like it's done it this time. So you can see that bar there, that's actually transferring the game onto the Game Boy cartridge, which is a really neat idea. Um, it definitely saved a lot of money at the time back in the day rather than buying them all separately from the magazine. So that's actually really cool. So I presume there's some sort of rewritable flash ROM within this cartridge, which is really cool. Uh, another thing I also wanted to try after this is done is try and use this, which is the SmartCom. So, before we do that, I've just tucked this out here, and I'm going to put this in the Game Boy, and fingers crossed, it should come up now with Karate Joe. Yes, it did. There it is. Let me focus this. So yeah, it did work. There it is. How cool was that? I'm sure you can tell that I'm so, so happy to have this as part of my collection, even though the actual thing isn't really that special. Let me know down in the comments below if any of you ever had this, or if any of you have ever seen it out in the wild, that would be really interesting. Also, if you'd like to see the entire half an hour recording of me testing all this stuff out, I'm actually going to be uploading it as a Patreon exclusive video, and as a channel members video here on YouTube once I set up the join feature. So if you'd be interested in seeing all of that, please consider going to join me over on Patreon, along with all of the amazing people that are going across the bottom of the screen right now. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye!